In this video, we're going to look at proof by contradiction. So with proof by contradiction, we look at what would happen if the opposite to what we're proving was true. And then when we look at that, we're going to find a contradiction, which means that the opposite cannot be true. So the first step is always assuming that the opposite is true. So here we've got a question proved by contradiction that the length of the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle, so the longest side of a right angle triangle, is less than the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. So we're going to start by assuming the opposite is true. And then we're going to find the contradiction, find something wrong with it. So what's the opposite? So if we call the hypotenuse C and the other two lengths A and B, like we do in Pythagoras, so assume that C is bigger or equal to A plus B. So that's what we're going to assume, and then we're going to find a problem. We're going to look for a problem with this assumption. So if we square both sides, we're going to get C squared is bigger or equal to A plus B squared and we're just going to expand this bracket so we're going to have a plus b times a plus b a times a is a squared a times b is a b b times a is also a b and b times b is b squared so what we got we've got c squared is bigger or equal to a squared plus b squared plus 2ab's and we know from Pythagoras that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared so I'm going to change a squared plus b squared into c squared so that gives me c squared is bigger or equal to c squared plus 2ab And if I take c squared off of both sides, that means I've got 0 is bigger or equal to 2ab. And I can even half it and have 0 is bigger or equal to a times b. So a times b is less than or equal to 0. And can that be true? Well, a and b are lengths. So A and B are lengths, so they must both be bigger or equal, nope, just bigger than zero. So they must be non-zero, they cannot be zero, you cannot have a length of zero, and they must be positive, you can't have a negative length. So what does that mean? We've got a positive times a positive, which is a positive, and that will be bigger than zero. So A times B is bigger than zero, which means we've found a contradiction. This cannot be true. So the hypotenuse must be less. The hypotenuse must be less than the sum of the other two sides. So we assumed the opposite, then we found the contradiction, which means we've proved that the hypotenuse is less than the sum of the other two sides. Okay, prove by contradiction that root 5 is irrational. So we're going to start by assuming the opposite. So the opposite of root 5 being irrational is that root 5 is rational. 
and that means it can be written in the form a over b and where a, that and where a and b where a and b are integers so a and b are whole numbers and they have no common factor other than one Okay, so let's work with this and try and find a contradiction in our assumption. So we're going to start by squaring both sides. So root 5 squared is 5. And a over b squared, a over b times a over b, is a squared over b squared. I'm going to times both sides by b squared, which gives me 5b squared equals a squared. Okay, so if, well, we've got 5b squared, so a squared must be a multiple of 5. So a squared is definitely a multiple of 5, and that means, well, 5 is a factor of a squared. And any prime factor of a squared must be a factor of a. So a must also be a multiple of 5. So the prime factors in a square number are the same as the prime factors in the number that were squared. You've just got twice as many of them times together. So the prime factors in a square number, exactly the same as the prime factors of the number that were squared. So a must be a multiple of 5. So I'm going to rewrite a as a multiple of 5. So I've got 5b squared, is, and that's equal to, I'm going to call it 5n, 5n squared. So a is a multiple of 5, so it can be written as 5n. So I'm going to square this side that would give me 25 n squared and I'll divide both sides by 5 so b squared equals 5 n squared so what does that tell me that tells me b squared must be a multiple of 5 And if 5 is a prime factor of b squared, it must also be a prime factor of b. So b must also be a multiple of 5. So a and b are both multiples of 5. And we assumed they have no common factor other than 1. So that's a contradiction. So A and B have a common factor of 5. So our assumption is incorrect. So the assumption is incorrect. We've found our contradiction and root 5 is irrational.